Hi, I'm Victor Agreta Jr. And today on Coders, we are going to be looking at Arduino, the microcontroller that might just be right for you. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. TelecomCareers.com Comscope, thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Register today for the Wireless Infrastructure Show, the premier national event for mobile network solutions, produced for the industry, by the industry. And welcome back. I am Victor Greta here with Chris Martin. Hey, Chris, how are you doing down there in Austin? Well, it's warm down here, Victor. Thankfully, we made it through the winter. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to get warm here, and the bugs are out, and things are, are happening outside. So It's almost derby time up there. That's right. That's when people go a little bit crazy. That's right. And, and, you know, that actually ties into a little bit of what we're talking about today, which is uh, microcontrollers and specifically Arduino, because one of the things that they used very early on for a lot of races is some way of digitally figuring out who actually crosses the finish line first, right? You don't need a computer to do that. You just need a sensor and something to trip that sensor and report back to something else. So that's that's an example of what Arduino can actually do for you. But this is this is kind of a new generation. It's it's kind of a new generation from an old generation in some respects. It's kind of um, consumerizing or, or um, communitizing these technologies that used to just be cranked out of factories. It's sort of giving you the, the guts of certain electronics and allowing you to program them and make them do things on your own. That's right. You know, uh, I, I remember as a kid growing up, my dad was an electronics hobbyist, and he would bring these things home, and you'd have to program the chips using, and you'd have to flash them, maybe using a UV light or just an electrical charge. And these things used to work so that hobbyists could build things. We used to build robots. We used to build all sorts of stuff. But you also had to have manuals. You had all sorts of things, and each manufacturer had a different way of doing things. So while microcontrollers have obviously been around for a long time, integrated chips have been around for a very long time, right? The Arduino is a little bit different, and there are a couple of things that actually make Arduino different. I think the biggest thing is the fact that Arduino is open source. So our, uh, you know, we've talked about open source on this show a, a couple of times, I think. But the big deal about that is, is that this is actually open source hardware. Uh, so it's not just open source software where people can say, oh, you know, I want to take this bit of code, I'm going to reuse it over here, I'm going to modify it and branch it and all of that. So when you think about open source hardware, that's like a little bit different, right? That's right. that's more of a platform. Completely. Yeah. So I, I guess another one of these that people might be familiar with is Raspberry Pi. Um, what, what would be the primary difference or the different kind of use cases that one would have between Raspberry Pi, Pi and Arduino. Arduino, by the way, sounds like it should be, you know, you'd find it on the digestive relief <laughs> shelf in your pharmacy. You know, oh, just take some Arduino if you're not feeling Take a little well. Arduino. It'll sell your stuff. Right yeah. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people mention Raspberry Pi and Arduino in the same breath because, basically because of the maker movement, right? So people who are out there building things and, and putting, making robots and making other stuff, you know, if you want your blinds to open every time a piece of toast pops up, you can enable this stuff with things that you can buy straight off of Amazon and very quickly learn to program them. The big difference between Raspberry Pi and Arduino is the fact that Arduino is just a microcontroller. Raspberry Pi is an entire computer. So Raspberry Pi actually has the discrete CPU. It has a discrete uh, logic bus. It has all of these pieces and parts that you would find in a computer, including RAM, most specifically. And it shrinks it down, and it puts into a very low-cost package. Arduino is actually cheaper because it is not a full computer. It does have a CPU. It does have digital in and outs. But it can't handle the sort of complexity that a Raspberry Pi could. For instance, you can put Linux on Raspberry Pi. You really wouldn't put Linux on Arduino. It would be overkill. So if you want to think I, of I, it. As I, I like vanilla ice cream on my <laughs> Raspberry Pi. That's right. And don't forget I'm gelato, sorry. which I, is I just, no, no. I just well, got it distracted. Is, 
It is funny because actually the Arduino, uh, this one in, in, right here that I have is the Uno, which is one of the more popular prototyping uh, ones. And this is, uh, this is actually very popular because everything's integrated. It has a USB port, but there are actually dozens of different types of Arduinos out there. And that's because it's open source, right? So people can actually take the basic Arduino specification and create their own board. So not all Arduinos are actually gonna look like this. Some are circular, some are elongated. There's even one that you can buy from Arduino that looks like a game controller. It's got the little D-pad and it's got buttons and whatnot. So that's what I wanna sort of impart is that Raspberry Pi could control Arduinos. Raspberry Pi is, the, is a computer, whereas this is just at the microcontroller level and it's not the higher level computer function. So in some so. respects, it's a it's a it's a, a hierarchy kind of thing. A Raspberry Pi is, in many respects, more complicated, um, even in its simplicity, than an Arduino. That's exactly right. Yeah, and and I think Raspberry Pi definitely serves a purpose. Uh, but I believe that Raspberry Pi is really more useful in the maker side of things and in the hobbyist side of things whereas we're actually seeing arduino in some other sectors and we're going to talk about those in just a few minutes but uh, I, I do want to talk about why arduino is important and specifically you know we worked for a long time with a lot of chips from a lot of different manufacturers there wasn't a whole lot of standardization but more importantly these were proprietary systems right so if you would buy something from Texas Instruments or you'd buy something from AMD or whoever, whoever it happened to be in the, in the 80s or 90s, then you had to have a specific set of instructions for those. Microcontrollers are fairly simple, so it wasn't that difficult to program these things. But as you know, anytime you introduce a learning curve, then that's just going to slow down your progress. So as innovation has sped up, there was a market need for something that allowed people to do rapid prototyping of microchips, or not microchips, but the microcontrollers that actually actuate other things. In other words, a lot of times Arduino is taking real world information and turning it into digital information to then provide instructions to something that is very often something that's a physical mechanic or some other switching device. So the microcontrollers have logic and you can program that logic but it's, no, it's not on the order of magnitude that something like Raspberry Pi would be because it's not a full computer. So it can basically just take inputs, do a little bit of processing with those inputs, and then send outputs, whether those be electrical signals or instructions or whatever. But it's really not feeding information to another device in the same way that a computer would because a computer can actually be a lot more verbose. One of the things about Arduino is that it has a USB port, but that's really only for programming it. Really, so so um, so in in other words, an Arduino would be sort of be a building block of a larger machine that does something, makes toast or whatever. That's right. So if you think about it like this, if I were building a robot, what I would use is Raspberry Pi for the brains and for all of the muscles and actuators and all the other things, essentially your sy different systems. Think of it like you've got your endocrine system, your digestive system, all of those different systems which are then controlled by different systems in your body, each one of those would be an Arduino, right? It seems like you've given this a lot of thought, Victor. <laughs> it's actually, are, are, you, are, you, are you plotting an overthrow? With your I'm maybe working Arduino on an army? Iron Man suit. Yeah, got my Iron Man suit ready to go. You're the man, you're the man for it. But no, in, in fact, you know, a lot of people are building this uh, or are building things like that. And, and that's sort of what's interesting is that, again, Arduino is not necessarily the smallest of uh, microcontrollers. I mean, not by a long shot. Right. You saw that's a fairly large thing. Although I do want to point out that this the actual Arduino brains are all contained on this specific chip right here. Uh, the reason I have all these wires is that this is actually one of the projects that you can build. I was building this with my son where we hold down a button and these these lights will flash. And in fact, it comes with a little, the kit comes with this little thing that's just purely for visual entertainment. It's just to kind of simulate a rocket ship control panel. And so that's what you're building as an educational tool. But this is just the breadboard. This is just an area for, you know, you hobbyists know what this is, where you pop your electronic components in. And then you have a few digital in and outs and, uh, over here in order to interface with this. You have a USB port and that actually connects and it does two things. One, it provides power to the components on here. 
and two, it allows you an interface for programming the uh, the Arduino. And um, and in my case, you know, I've got USB. It doesn't always necessarily work like that. Like I said, some of these smaller ones have specific ports that you can do things with. And since it's open source, again, people can build things and modify and change this and build it to spec in any way that they want to. And we've had a couple of people talk about the power of open source. That's really a powerful tool for people who have employees who have the technical skills to be able to prototype things, give them these tools and let them play. And I think that a lot of managers are gonna find that like, wow, there's, there's maybe things that we hadn't thought about before that these guys can do with these things once we give them these tools. And I think that's really the, the coolest thing about Arduino is the fact that it's enabling people to try these things out without having to have those complicated pieces of equipment like a EEPROM programmer or whatever it is. All you need is about 50 bucks and a USB port and you're set to go because everything comes in the box. That's really interesting because so often in manufacturing and mobile use and all kinds of electronic production, you'll get, you'll get an end product that kind of gets you almost there, kind of almost does everything you want. And if they took one more step, if they just made it, you know, with a set of LED lights that said that it was functioning or something, then it would be perfect. And it's kind of interesting that, that with this technology, you can kind of, after you've gotten your device, your robot, your whatever the case may be, you can then kind of retrofit it with one of these to take it and make it do exactly what you want it to do. It might get you 98% of the way there, but you really want it to be 100% of the way there and it enables you to do that on your own. Well, and you know, for hobbyists and, and even for any business, the ability to rapidly prototype ideas is incredibly important right now. So innovation is being fueled by the ability to rapidly prototype things. Arduino is one of those tools that really gives you a very powerful skill set because first of all, there's a huge community around Arduino. So you've got all of the people who are just out there as makers, as hobbyists using this thing. So if you are using this in an industrial and business context, you actually have a lot of support. And that again is one of the good things about open source is the fact that there's always a community that's involved with it. And in this particular case, the Arduino community is very, very active and it's a very active project. So, you know, there are open source projects that are kind of like not many people are involved with them. And so maybe you don't get as much support, but believe me, if you go in with Arduino, you're going to find a ton of, ton of resources, not just from the foundation itself that sets the specifications, but from everyone else that's been using this. And Arduino has been out for a few years now. So it has a very passionate fan base and I found very helpful fan base. There's also a ton of books. I've got uh, one of the four dummies books. They've got an Arduino for dummies. What's a so book? It tells you how mainstream. <laughs> What's a book? Yeah. Uh, we'll do that on another show. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. I used, to re I used to learn programming from big books like they were that thick. I don't even know if they still make those. <laughs> I, I, think, I speak for the trees, and I hope they don't. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, so why don't you take us, take us inside the Arduino and show us a little bit of what, what coding is all about with it. Sure. Well, you know, I want to talk about uh, some of the, the contextual uses for this really, because uh, there, there are several sectors that obviously are, are using this. Um, and I think right now, the number one that maybe our, our viewers would want to be interested in is in industry, right? So one of the big things that you can use Arduino for in industry uh, are programmable logic controllers. Um, this is the sort of thing that, you know, we maybe take, I think most people take for granted. Uh, but if you're trying to create something that needs to be controlled by logic, right, there are several different ways you could do. One thing you could do is you could use Raspberry Pi, but that's overkill. You know, that's, that's killing an ant with a flamethrower, basically, because you've got all this processing power. Really, this thing only needs to evaluate a couple of conditions, maybe, and then create an answer and then actuate something based on that, right? You don't need a Raspberry Pi for that. And again, you could construct something, and don't get me wrong, you could obviously construct something that's gonna be smaller than this if you have access to a place where you can create a breadboard, you can create a chip, or you can you know, get a chip and learn its intricacies and implement that. But again, the idea is that this is already made and this is low cost, and this has support, and it has a language behind it. So what are you um, holding in your hand? What's the price point for that? So this is about a $50 unit, but this actually comes with an entire kit. 
So this is the uh, Uno. I'm dropping pieces here, but this is actually called the Uno, and it actually comes with all of the wires and LEDs, resistors, capacitors, everything else that you need to do about 50 projects in it. So if you think at it, about it from a you know dollar per project, if you're going to educate yourself on Arduino, that's an incredibly uh, easy way to do this. But uh, you know, in industry, you can actually specifically go on. And again, if you go to the Arduino website, you can see that there are dozens of variations of Arduino. And Arduino is just the base unit. In industry, what they have is, uh, well, it's not just in industry. With Arduino, you also have these things called shields. And what shields do is they extend the functionality of the basic unit. Now, again, you know, if you're looking at this, there is no Wi-Fi chip on that. There's no uh, GSM. There's you know nothing else in that. The only way to communicate to the outside world is a little bit of digital in and out ports right here, uh, just some pins, just a couple of pins basically. So the question is, well, how do we put this together and how do we integrate this with other things? Um, what you're going to do is you're going to buy what are called shields, and those enable other things. I mean, you could theoretically get a shield that interfaces with RS-232, or you could get a shield, and they do make Wi-Fi shields. They make uh, shields that actually connect to cellular networks. So that's why this is very important, I think, for the telecom industry to understand. This Arduino is also a part of the Internet of Things, and that's what people are using these for in a home context is that they're using them to actuate things in their home. Let's say the temperature goes above a certain point, they've got a table fan that they want to activate, or let's say that the sun comes up, they want their blinds to open in the morning. Those sorts of things are actually very, very easy to build with the Arduino. So if you think about that in an industrial context, right, that means that if you have a situation where you maybe need to measure something or meter something, and you want that to report back, but it would be very expensive to perhaps run a cable or to implement some other solution, bam, you've got a Wi-Fi shield or even a, a wireless uh, cellular shield. You connect that to the Arduino, you hook in the sensors, you program the logic to tell it when this happens, then do this, and boom, you've got a very easy to implement and low cost solution to something that otherwise years ago would have taken a lot of effort just to get that working. Right. Um, and that's just one example. There are a lot of examples in industry where they've needed something quickly, and instead of you know putting in a rush order, they actually just build it in with an Arduino at the center and then deploy it that way. And that's part of that open source aspect is the fact that they can just go on there, say, okay, here's the spec, here's the one type of Arduino, the sort of variant that we need. Let's buy that, implement it. And like I said, you can find Arduinos that are really tiny because they don't need all this extra stuff. Sometimes they're very special purpose Arduinos, um, and you can just plug those in, look at the documentation, and write the code. So Arduino, in, in an industrial context, I see it doing a couple of different things. First of all, it allows a huge amount of speed when it comes to prototyping or just trying out different concepts, and it provides a low-cost solution to this prototyping and you know constant iteration. So you're going to get a savings, and you're going to really help uh, your, your technologist perhaps innovate new solutions if you unleash this thing up upon them. So I, I sound like I'm kind of trying to sell the thing, but it's actually, it's a nonprofit. So it's not like they're, <laughs> you know, not like they're, they're trying to worry about shipping a bunch of units or anything like that, but uh, open source nonprofit, you know, what, what could you lose? Right. So, so baseline, how does this technology, how would it be integrated in, um, in the wireless world? So, there are a couple of different ways. One, one of the things to keep in mind is that because this is not a Raspberry Pi, you know, you couldn't do things like a spectrum analysis. There, there are a lot of tools that you could use with a, with a Raspberry Pi and some software that you, uh, that you could use that, you know, maybe you don't need a whole computer, you know, like a Mac or a PC. You just want something that's tiny to be able to do the charting and all that. Arduino's not going to do that because you can't put a database on it. You can't track files like that it has read-only memory it does not have ram so that's something to keep in mind is that what this is is very very specific case sort of when when the rubber meets the road i like to tell people that's when you want to use arduino because uh what this is going to be able to do is take a bunch of inputs and m apply logic to those and then provide outputs and if that sounds like I was just explaining a computer, yeah, it's a it's a microcomputer, but it's a microcomputer in the same way that the uh, 
Minitels in France were microcomputers, right? You weren't going to do your spreadsheets on those, but you were able to look up phone numbers, look up the weather, that sort of thing. So it's, I guess we could call this sort of a, you know, we had smartphone, we have smartphones now. Remember, we, we call them dumb phones. Uh, so this is sort of like the dumb phone equivalent to smartphones. Raspberry Pi would be your smartphone. And this is actually going to be like your dumb phone, basically, where it's very, very basic. It's very stripped down. So in a wireless industrial use, you could use these uh, as controllers for just about anything. You could use them for meters, um, as long as you don't need a lot of logging. But you could still pump out the output to something like a database if you're using wireless. So I think that the idea here is that there are a component, and if you need components that need to be reprogrammable, then Arduino is definitely something that you want to look at. That said, Arduino is more of a, uh, as a stepping stone. So you may not be implementing Arduino long term, right? It's, this may be something that you're using as a short term, either a stopgap or for prototyping. Maybe not for the, you know, for five, six years out or whatever, because th there's sort of a different set of specifications in that. And there's a little bit of debate in the in the industry sector about how reliable is Arduino. But that's a conversation that always revolves around open source anything. So in this case, uh, you know, what you want to look at is the components. And they do have some industrial grade components in some of the flavors of Arduino. But again, you know, it's open source hardware, which means that you can just download the spec. And if you want to source all of the best pieces for this, that's great. The idea is that what you're doing is utilizing the, the built knowledge of everyone, like I said, with the open source community. So it's tying into that open source community, which gives Arduino a huge amount of power behind it versus the off the shelf chips, which again, you might get support from a vendor, but that's one vendor, one source, and what happens if they go away, right? So this is a way of just sort of, you know, hedging your bets in a lot of ways. Uh, and giving your technologists some really fun to toys to play with. So why don't you take us under the hood and let's see what programming looks like. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're, well, I, before I do that, actually, real quick, let me talk about uh, Arduino and education. Um, I just I want to touch on that real quick because I think that this is something that there's a little bit of a problem maybe right now people worried about the next generation of technologists that are coming up we worry you know we've got stem schools and we're worried about what are people going to do when you know we have a, a knowledge gap right i feel pretty confident about the future because of things like this uh, let me show you one of the things that's included in the box actually and that's this um, and so this actually is something that you build to spin and you're able to vary the speeds on it that's a really, really simple thing to do, but for kids, that enables them to see, oh, you know what? There's something behind this. It's not just this magical thing that when I turn a dial, something happens, and then this goes faster or slower. They see the code, and they actually understand what's happening and how these microcontrollers operate in our daily lives. So I think that the educational aspect of it is really huge, both from a hobbyist standpoint and from an educational, like, pr you know, primary education on up. And really, kids of just about any age can take on these. I know that, uh, Chris, you and I had talked about Raspberry Pi and, you know, g young kids getting into that and whatnot. The cool thing about Raspberry Pi is that you can put, like, arcade emulators on there. You can put games on there. So I think that's a big aspect of why kids like Raspberry Pi. You can't really do that with the Arduino. So it's more for, like, hardware hobbyists and hardware nerds. But you were asking about the development environment and sort of under the hood. So let's go into a little demonstration of Arduino, and uh, you know, I think we I think we have a graphic with the uh, with some of it in use actually in the industry. So if you look at that, you can actually see that people implement Arduino boards in other boards. So there's actually gear out there right now that has Arduino as a component of it. So that's the first aspect of it is the fact that under the hood, what you really have is this Arduino chip. And then you might have controller circuitry surrounding that. And of course, you're going to have your input output. That's it. That's really the heart of the Arduino hardware. And because it's an open source project, people can modify that as long as they maintain you know, the code base or whatever. And here's the beauty of this. If you implement Arduino, like if I were to go build a car, let's say I'm going to go compete against Tesla, right? And I'm going to create autonomous self-driving cars. 
and I could actually implement Arduinos and not tell anyone that I've implemented Arduino because it's open source. And according to the stipulations, you can do that. It's, it's not like uh, some open source projects that say, you know, GNU license where it's like you have to stipulate we've used this and we've used this and we've used this. Arduino is fully open and fully free. So that's ex exceptionally powerful for people who want to bring products to market. And the fact that you can tie these things in wirelessly by just buying a shield, which, you know, varies from 30 to $100 or something, that's unbelievable. You know, to do that before would have been prohibitively expensive and certainly without, uh, beyond the realm of most uh, normal people. But on the software side, um, I'm actually going to, uh, hold on just one second, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what the code looks like here. Let's see. There we go. So if you guys can see that, this just shows you a little bit of example. Now, this is from the Arduino site, and this actually is looking at a web server. So this is something that has an Ethernet port, or actually, this is what one of the uh, Wi-Fi shields you can buy. So this is a little bit of the code, and you can actually see that they say include Wi-Fi dot H. And all of these includes, again, just like in a, in a normal C-derived language, which is what Arduino uses, by the way, is C, C-sharp derived language um, or CC plus derived language, you're going to include these different frameworks. So when you need something, you're going to pull that in. In this case, we're going to be pulling in Wi-Fi, which are the, the tools that the, the drivers basically that the Wi-Fi shield needs to use. We're going to pull in our credentials, which we use to, to log in, right? Um, and then some other things in here, memory free, there's some other stuff. Um, we set our variables. And then we go in here and look at that. We've got server, right? We're calling a port and we're coming in here and we're actually creating a web page within this. So the code in here allows us that page one is actually building a web page. And what this is designed to do, if you look in here, you might actually just guess at what it's designed to do. Um, here it is right here in the body. The only thing that we're showing is temperature. So that's, that's that particular little bit is actually a temperature widget. So it's building a temperature widget. And if you look at this, this is pretty much just HTML code with a little bit of added, um, added terminology for the, uh, the C compiler that's built into Arduino. So uh, well, I shouldn't say it's built into Arduino. As a matter of fact, it's compiled on the computer side and then deployed into Arduino, which is another one of the beautiful things about it. It's a free tool. You compose everything on the computer, you then load it onto the Arduino, and everything works great. So this is telling the Arduino, look, you're going to build these things. You're going to send that down. Um, you're going to send that down the line. Oh, there we go. Okay. And you're going to send that down the line, and then it's going to, on the Wi-Fi side, it's going to build out these pages as according to these instructions. So there's temperature, and I believe the other one, this is... Uh, yeah, this is just some error handling and whatnot. And that's, you know, that's about it. It's not very complicated stuff. And that's the beauty of this is you can pull in JavaScript, you can all the web tools that you want, you can pull those things in. And then we have serial communications. So you can do serial communications here. Um, and they are printing out, there's degrees Celsius. You can convert to Fahrenheit if you want to. Let's see, we've got HTTP headers, of course, if you can't find something. And a lot of this is just, just the usual stuff that you would do and making sure that nothing breaks. And if it does break, then somehow it has a way of handling those breaks. So let's see, looking at some more of this. And here we've got some if and else if statements. Again, if you're used to C or C+, this is all extremely basic for you. It's the same uh it's it's the same patterns it's much of the same linguistics essentially so that's another aspect of this and i'll just uh i'll switch back to me and just tell you that like one of the coolest things about this is seeing somebody who is used to programming something from you know years and years ago maybe in hexadecimal code or whatnot and they come into Arduino and they realize, you know what, I can actually use a proper programming language like C and I can come in here and I can very quickly tell it, when you see this, then do this. 
for 50 bucks. Um, and it, actually cheaper than that if you just buy the board. Keep in mind, 50 bucks was the starter kit, which includes a bunch of components. So it's, you know, it's a grab bag of stuff that you would have gotten at Radio Shack, plus the Arduino board, plus a little breadboard, um, plus some little paper stuff. Oh, and it includes this nice big book of projects that you've got here that get you started. So that's the one that you can just get on Amazon at any time. Uh, and, you know, I think it's actually like $55. You should get Amazon Prime so you don't have to pay any shipping. But um, Thanks, Jeff but it, Bezos. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, use, be sure to use my code. Now, um, <laughs> but no, it's, you know, you know, Chris, you know, I'm curious from your perspective, how easy does this u look to use? It looks fairly easy, but remember, I'm, I started with just very basic programming. So I don't know, the pro, you know, you see, pro, you see code, and you're kind of like, uh, you know, what's the, the John Foster Nash character in, in A Beautiful Mind? You know, you sort of like see all these incredible things floating around. And to me, it kind of looks like a mashup. Um, but what, what I find most interesting, and I'm sure this is part of what you find interesting, is that Victor and I have, have sons that are about the same age. Um, and my son loves his computer, um, loves everything about it. He's already decided he, where he wants to go to college. Um, and he wants to be, he wants to make robots. Um, and so something like this would be a really great kind of first t toe in the water to, um, cause you know, you mentioned Radio Shack. Do you remember those, those, uh, it was like a big circuit board and all you had to do was connect like this switch to the battery, to the, to the flash bulb, the light bulb. And then you, when you press the button, the light bulb would go on. That's so right. Simple circuitry. Um, yeah. and now with the way the computer world is evolving there, everyone's talking about how the world world needs more programmers. I almost think, and he's already done that circuit, that radio shack circuit board thing. Um, so an Arduino seems like a perfect, uh, option to kind of get him a little bit deeper into the programming world. That's right. Yeah. When I was a kid, we had the, the ones with springs. And exactly. You bent the spring yeah. back. You put the, the wire in there. There you go. Well, and what's great is that, look, you still have those jumper wires today. I mean, this is essentially the 101 electronics projects, but it's a million and one um, because they've, again, they've taken so much of that and they've shrunk it down. And yet at the same time, it's still teaching kids a little bit about electronics because what's cool about this is you've got the programming side, but you've also got the electronic side. So my son is learning how to read an electronic schematic and actually learning about resistors and capacitors and whatnot. And that's another aspect, I think, that so if we tie the educational and the industrial side together, what companies can take away from this, and this is something that's become very, very popular, hackathons. So if you want to sponsor a hackathon, if you want to develop projects that can be used as Internet of Things projects, if you want to integrate these things and throw them at your network and see what happens, I think it's a huge opportunity for carriers to that host these things like hackathons to consider using Arduinos in an educational context, both from the outreach aspect and from the educational aspect, but also from a sort of selfish aspect of saying, hey, what can you do for us that's going to be really amazing? You know, what can you build with this that's going to be really amazing? And the tool allows you to do things in ways that really were just very, very difficult to set up before. Because you can literally take a box of these, dump them on a table with a bunch of wires and whatnot. And people, within a little while, it's like an episode of the A-Team. You know, within a little while, they've got stuff scooting around and they've got things being triggered and, and all kinds of things. It, it's truly phenomenal. And just the speed at which you can develop with an Arduino is... Um, I don't want to say it's unprecedented, but it's certainly an incredible boon to the industry because of the documentation, the community, and just the robustness of the hardware in general. That's awesome. Well, getting under the hood of the Arduino. Absolutely, I still think yeah. it sounds a little bit like a digestive aid, but... <laughs> well, you can find out more, actually, at arduino.cc. That's their official website of the foundation that, that manages the open source project. And again, you can order kits straight from them. You can also look and see at all of the different Arduino boards that are available. Um, I, th I think that that's one of the most intriguing things about this. And, and again, a lot of people are familiar 
with uh, open source software. Open source hardware is a little bit harder to wrap their minds around, but really all that is, it just says, here's the specification. And people in the wireless world will know very well that protocols are absolutely in important, right? So it's a set of protocols and it's a set of specifications so that if you're building something, it will work nicely with other Arduino implementations. And again, I think that that's really critical. Uh, but they've got Arduino Explora, for instance, that looks like a game controller. The Arduino Micro, which is about one quarter the size of this. Um, and then they also have things like an SD shield, which allows you to put an SD card in, a Wi-Fi shield, an Ethernet shield, a GSM shield, which with a SIM card gives you access to GPRS networks. So there's so much of this. There's an Arduino robot, which is a circular motherboard with the Arduino built on the middle so that you can create one of those little bump and go type robots with maybe a little bit more brains than just bump and go. Um, there's Lilypad, which is a teeny tiny little Arduino. Um, bunches and bunches of these. And again, what I want to impress to people who are considering using this in an industrial complex or in an industrial context is the fact that you can make your own. If you already have a fabrication facility of some kind, if you already have electronic engineers, you can have them create Arduino based stuff and then you can leverage the power of that community and the software base that's already out there. The documentation is there. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. And that is a really the crux of what we see with the maker movement is enabling people to reuse things. So that's a great boon for the industry because now what you have are these kind of off the shelf devices or off the shelf components or components that can create components. Um, and it's at a scale of which we've never seen and the robustness in the community that we've never seen. So it's, it's a weird thing to see some guy who cashed out his Apple stocks, you know, 10 years ago or, or five years ago, he's been retired for 20 years and he's just hanging out, making cool stuff, suddenly talking to an engineer at AT&T about like, Hey, wait, how do we do this? And how do we do that? And everybody's, everybody's very happy to do it because this is open source and really in the end it benefits everybody. Uh, so it's, I think, it, again, I'm, I'm singing the praises of open source in many ways, but I'm also singing the praises of Arduino because it is a very strong platform and it's been proven hundreds and hundreds of times. So I, I think it's very robust and I think it's something that a lot of people should be looking at right now. Kumbaya, baby. That's right. <laughs> All right. Victor, why don't you take us out? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, you know what? Next week, I'm not sure what we're going to have. We're going to have something fun. Uh, and informative as usual, but we will, uh, we're going to be diving more into code next week. We're not going to so much look at the hardware, but uh, just a reminder that uh, if you guys are, if, are we done? We good? Yeah, I think Do any so. Any more questions? Any questions from the audience? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I've been Victor Agreta, and again, you can you can you can find me online. But Coders is a production of RCR TV News. If you want to reach me, you can you can suggest topics. I'm open to that. I would love to hear from you. Just find me on Twitter. My handle is SuperPixels. And for all the latest wireless, uh, uh, latest news on wireless code and the whole world of wireless, check out RCRWireless.com. <laughs>